Uh, word of the day is split. We're talking about should you worry about the past if what you have going on now in sports, life, or any everything in between is going just fine. And come on, you got obviously the Carson Wentz game coming up. And Ben Simmons spoke today. So there was not a lot of good questions asked, maybe none. There were not any good, many good answers, maybe none. There were zero follow-up questions, period. And J.J. Reddick carried a lot of water on behalf of Ben Simmons. So the thing that most people fixated on, and it's a thing that no one can shake, and I don't want to spend a whole bunch of time talking about this dude because, again, I don't find him that interesting, was when he did not dunk the ball against Atlanta. And J.J. Reddick asked him about it, kind of. But also notice in this cut, Simmons is going to talk for a while, and then J.J. Reddick, rather than ask a follow-up question, will even in this situation try to carry water for him. Jen, and I believe we cleaned up all the language. Booney, um, have it ready. I believe we did, but just in case, because Ben Simmons also cursed a lot on purpose to hope that the regular news outlets didn't pick it up too much to give him more protection because he's a baby. Go right ahead, Jen. This is his response to why he didn't dunk the ball in the Hawks game. No, in the moment, I just spun. And I'm assuming Trey's going to come over quicker. So I'm thinking he's going to come full blown. And I see Matisse going there. I'm, you know, Matisse, Matisse is athletic and get up. So I'm thinking, okay, quick pass. He's going to flush it, not knowing how much space there was. It happened, it happened so quick that you just make a read. And in the playoffs, you need to make the right decisions majority of the time. And for that moment, I mean, for, Bro, it, it happened, and I was just like, okay, well, now we got to go make another play. So that's how I'm thinking. And I didn't realize how, you know, everyone's posting. I'm like, is that big? Like, In fairness to you, and I, I again, I'm not giving you an out here. Up, you absolutely should have dunked it. In fairness to you, you don't know it's Trey right when you spin. No, you're spinning into a jersey. Yeah. Essentially. So. Yeah. So, I, but look, when it slows down, it looks really bad, Ben. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it looks terrible. I was like, well, when I look at it now, I'm like, man, I should have punched that shit. But it didn't happen. Go right back to the very, very beginning, please, Jen. And, and play just the very beginning, please. No, in the moment, I just spun. And I'm assuming Trey's going to come over. Stop it right there. Quick. He says, in the moment. I assume Trey's good. He knew it was Trey. And what does J.J. Reddick later on do? In your defense, I don't want to really defend you, but in your defense, you didn't know it was Trey. Ben Simmons said he knew it was Trey. That's what I mean about how much of a garbage interview it was. It was like that for an hour. That's the interview. Him half behind taking responsibility for what he did, and J.J. Reddick doing everything he can in the world to defend him and protect him like he's a damn child. You know what's funny to me? He said, I saw Matisse, and he could get up, and he's you athletic. Me? Ben, what are you? You're athletic, and you can get up. Like, you're telling me you want to rely on Matisse Thibel when it comes to offensive production. Not that I really trust you, off, but you get my point? It's like, yeah. dude, you're 6'10", and you're athletic as hell. You're telling me in a playoff game underneath the basket, you think... Think you want to rely on Matisse Thibel's athleticism over yours? You're come on, dude. That's I, awful. I, In basketball, you have to be able to rely on yourself at times, right. and that was a time where he should have relied on himself. Take the damn ball and slam it home. And that's not hindsight. That's real time. He should have made a better decision there. He failed. Period. And it was a bunch of that. And I don't really like talking about the guy. Now he says he was going through mental health issues. If you believe him, that so be it. But let, I just want to make something clear. He was not close with Joel Embiid. They're, they're, they were never friends. They're not always, they were not always enemies, but I'm telling you they were never friends. When you're going through something personal in your life, the people you rely on are your friends. It is not Joel Embiid or anybody else's job to help you out when you're not their friend. He would not be there for Joel Embiid, and if, Joel, if he decides Joel Embiid wasn't there for him, so be it. But let's not act like they were best buddies and all of a sudden, he abandoned his best friend. They weren't friends at all. Also, some things are private. Like, I make it very clear when I tell them, like, you don't have to share. Anybody that I work with here does not have to share anything they're uncomfortable sharing. And I actually like the people I work with. They really like each other. So why was it Doc Rivers, who also didn't like Ben Simmons, and Ben Simmons didn't like him, wasn't even talking to him, why was it everybody else's job? That's all. I'm not going to get on to it, but, but he just did a bunch of excuses which means at the end of the day with the Nets, we know how this is going to end. I'll tell everybody how it's going to look. 
At moments, it's going to look nice with Kyrie and Durant. Ben Simmons is going to fill in and get his little 10, 10, and 10 triple doubles. And then when playoffs come, if assuming he plays, he's going to quit on them again like he's quit his whole life. And that's kind of all I kind of want to say about Ben Simmons. Um, Hunter, Ricky, Jen, if you guys have anything else to say about Ben Simmons, you have the floor. I, I do have one more that just irritated me throughout yeah. the – I just – I don't understand how he sat down and thought that this was going to change – what maybe public perception was like I, that's clearly the goal is we need to get out in front of this you're going to be starting a new season next year so sit down like to me you just gave more crap like I think it should deserve more backlash than anything else but maybe there's enough out there that don't see it the way we do where we could see right behind the you know what right like it is you know what and that's how mm -hmm. we interpret it mm -hmm. but there might be a lot of people out there that go oh that was nice to hear from him and he, like are there enough of those people out there where he gets what he's looking for uh he, he i think the getting booed at the u.s open threw some things off i believe that he will uh yeah the, the people the gullible people yes and then people who just think that uh, a mental health issues become an excuse for your behavior like like for example when somebody does drugs for example right they're impaired so if they go and steal your tv it's to feed a habit like they they have a, a they have an addiction problem but you're not okay with them stealing your tv Regardless of what Simmons was going through, he quit on his teammates, he quit on the city, and he also now threw under the bus uh, uh, people who he was not close with. It was not their responsibility. I would not expect um, someone from a show like the John Kincaid show that I don't know, for example, to help me if I'm going through a tough time if they don't even know me. Yet he's saying that it was on Embiid and, and them to help him. They don't know him because they're not friends like that. And that's the part I just I just don't understand. I got, I got one more. Then I swear I'm done. Okay. Okay. He's mm -hmm. talked about how everything here was magnified, like him not shooting a basketball. Come on. Dude. Come on. You ran point for so many years throughout all these regular season games. Then when it matters most, you have to be stripped from those duties to go stand underneath the basket and do nothing. Yet I'm told I magnified the inability to shoot too much. Like, how about the fact that we magnified it? Because what your job was throughout the entire season to set the identity for the basketball team, we couldn't even utilize when the playoffs came around. That's why we magnified. And this is a little different than Hunter staring at his ex right here. Yep. And, and the yep. reason why I say that is because he he hurt the basketball team. He hurt yep. the city of Philadelphia. And whether it be on purpose or whatever his thought process was in the playoffs, it doesn't matter. In in our eyes, in our sports eyes, he hurt the city of Philadelphia. And who gives, uh, you, you know, who cares if he if if he even plays anymore? Because right. does anybody know if he's going to step on the basketball court? I mean, he claims he is. He claims he's all good and he all that stuff. He said he was going to shoot more threes than Kevin Durant. Sarcastically. Yeah, sarcastically. But, okay. Stuff all right. Like yeah, that. Just so, make a foul shot every once in a while. Yeah. So it, it's the bottom line. Um, it was newsy. I felt like we had to talk about it at some point. Yeah, I'm sorry. For uh, no, no, no. I, I'm just, I'm just, I've been done with the dude. And, and again, player-based media, if they're not going to ask questions, will hurt the fans. Do you not think there were some fans out there in Philadelphia or Brooklyn who would have liked to hear answers to actual questions? Yes. For example, has he been diagnosed with any mental health disorder? Not which one it is. That's private. I'm saying, did he go to a doctor and did a doctor say, spin? You have anxiety, depression, bipolar, like any, any, you know, did, did, did a doctor do that? Did a doctor say that? Or, and I'm not saying, I'm saying, did he go, did he go to get help? And did a professional say, oh man, here are the tools to get past the issues that you're having. I'm interested in finding that out. And I'm sure Brooklyn fans who are hoping that the guy can keep it together for a whole year are interested in whether or not he got a be example. When, when hockey says upper or lower body injury, I want to know, did that doctor, did that player go get an MRI and meet with a doctor to get that thing fixed? Did he go to a doctor and get his thing fixed? And we didn't get it didn't get asked because JJ Reddick did the interview. And that's the problem. There were so many follow-ups. Right. Even when he was talking about the practice that he got kicked out with with Doc, I'm like, where's the follow-up? He said well, he went into Doc's office and said, I'm not ready. And then Doc threw him in there anyway. I really doubt it went to that level. But, you were looking like a loser that wasn't – that you your body language told me everything. You played a role in that ridiculousness that went down that day. 